Novorossiysk, Russia's Black Sea naval base, after a year in German hands, falls to the Soviets. From Caucasian foothills surrounding the city on three sides, Russian heavy artillery bombards Novorossiysk for four days and nights. Katusha's, Russia's rocket guns, hurl their deadly message upon the enemy. Morning of the fifth day finds Russia's Black Sea fleet standing offshore. Landing barges filled with Russian Marines attack from the sea, cutting off the Nazis' last avenue of escape. From the shore side, they charge in. Veterans of Odessa and Sevastopol, blasting the Nazis out house by house. Again, the Soviet flag flies over Novorossiysk, gateway to the Caucasus. Films made in 1903. The world's first airplane, created by Orville Wright and his brother Wilbur, is about to take flight. Here at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, this primitive kite made aviation history. With this first catapulted takeoff, man's age-old dream of flight became a reality. Washington, 40 years later. For the year's greatest contribution to American aviation, General Arnold, Chief of the Army Air Forces, is honored with Orville Wright, who in 1911 taught Arnold to fly. From Mr. Wright, General Arnold receives the coveted Collier Trophy. Today, great fleets of United Nations planes fly the world's airways on missions of war. Tomorrow, theirs will be the mission of peace. Christmas at home for the President of the United States. At his New York State residence, Mr. Roosevelt spends a quiet Christmas day with his wife, their sons and daughters, and seven grandchildren. With the president are two of his four sons. The others are in distant theaters of war. Reunion, the first Christmas at home in 10 years. Australia, youngsters who wish to follow the sea get their first training in the Merchant Navy's Cadet Corps. They learn to master the seagoing hammock and attend classes in elementary navigation. They learn to master the seagoing hammock. Australia, a great maritime nation, will use these boys to man the liners and freighters of tomorrow. They finally learn to master the seagoing hammock. Prime Minister Winston Churchill spends his 69th birthday at Tehran, surrounded by British and Indian troops. He is presented with gifts of rare Persian craftsmanship by regiments stationed in the Middle East. 
Shortly after these pictures were made, Mr. Churchill was stricken with pneumonia. Now, well on the road to recovery, he is back in the fight. <music> Dramatic scenes from the South Pacific. United States bombers taking aboard their deadly cargoes. Nightly preparations for the incessant mass air attacks upon the Japanese in this theater of war. Final instructions, briefing the airmen call it, then targets mapped, watches checked, they set out upon their mission. Billy Mitchell bombers, B-25s are on the line. These are the ships that surprised the Japs in those first smashing raids on Rabaul. The crew's mascot hopes he's to be taken along, but not this time. Taking off at early dawn, the powerful ships soar aloft. American air power paving the way for ground forces under General MacArthur. These are the sky fleets that are smashing Jap bases on New Guinea and New Britain. At low level, they loose their bombs upon the Jap-infested jungle. Mission accomplished, they head for home. The Allies' ever-growing sky fleets bringing ever nearer the day of doom for Japan's dreams of conquest. <laughs> 